Um, I would say that they mobilize muscle before they start mobilizing fat. So cows are going to mobilize muscle, especially cows that have a lot of muscle reserves. They're going to mobilize it at the end of their gestation. So for the month uh, before they calve, they're going to start mobilizing muscle. We see that cows that have a lot of muscle reserves mobilize a lot of that muscle and it results in greater calf birth weights. And then uh, cows that don't have a lot of muscle reserves aren't able to mobilize very much before calving and then they start mobilizing after calving. Hi, I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Jackie Borman. She's an associate professor at my old alma mater, Purdue University, uh, in the animal sciences department. Being from a dairy farm and, and being married to a dairy farmer, she has a, a much greater knowledge of, of dairy problems, dairy concerns than a lot of academics. And that says, has influenced her, both her research program in management and nutrition. Jackie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Uh, one of your major areas of research, which has been a great interest to me, is your work in protein mobilization. And I guess the first thing is, why, why is this important? Protein mobilization in, in early lactation, why, why is this important? So uh, originally, um, I started looking at how much muscle cows are mobilizing a little bit by accident, but... Um, we had used ultrasounds to measure how much fat cows were accumulating on different diets. And those same ultrasounds were showing us the longus mis dorsi, uh, which is a way that we can quantify how much muscle an animal has. And then we started thinking about, well, if we can measure muscle with the same tool, let's think about during the adaptation to lactation, how much muscle they're mobilizing it's pretty well established that cows are utilizing adipose tissue during that uh, transition from late gestation into lactation, but they're also using muscle. So we just wanted a way to be able to quantify how much muscle they were using. Is there, we'll get back to the importance of this, but you know, with fat mobilization or energy reserves, we have, we can measure body condition changes on mm -hmm. farms. Is there a way on farm method to estimate protein mobilization or is this pretty much a research measurement. So it's not strongly correlated. Uh, muscle amount is not strongly correlated with body condition score. So I would say right now, there's nothing that we can visually do that's really easy to say this cow has a lot of muscle or not. Uh, so I think that it's more of a, we have to use tools like ultrasounds, which are used on commercial farms all the time for pregnancy checks. So it's a possibility to incorporate that onto farms moving forward, but that's probably our best bet. Have, have you quantified in your research how, how much muscle or protein are, are cows losing and when does it start and when would it stop uh, mobilization? Yeah, so we have quantified how much they're losing, again, looking at one location of the animal. And on average, cows are mobilizing about 30 to 35 percent of their muscle um, from late gestation into early lactation. And we're not sampling every day, so we don't exactly know when they're not, uh, when they stop mobilizing. But by 60 days in milk, they appear to be done mobilizing and some animals are accreting very small amounts of protein at that time. So it does kind of follow the fat reserve mobilization, at least on a time profile kind of follows that. Um, I would say that they mobilize muscle before they start mobilizing fat. So cows are going to mobilize muscle, especially cows that have a lot of muscle reserves. They're going to mobilize it at the end of their gestation. So for the month, uh, before they calve, they're going to start mobilizing muscle. We see that cows that have a lot of muscle reserves mobilize a lot of that muscle and it results in greater calf birth weights. And then uh, cows that don't have a lot of muscle reserves aren't able to mobilize very much before calving and then they start mobilizing after calving. What, what are some of the problems? Say if a cow mobilizes too much, uh, are there some problems or what, what are some consequences of, of excess protein mobilization? Yeah, there's a lot that's still unknown about 
What are some of the negative consequences with protein mobilization? Again, fat is a lot more well-researched and we understand the implications of uh, too much fat mobilization and resulting in ketosis and fatty liver. Uh, muscle, I think that there's a, a minimum amount of muscle that a cow has to maintain. So she can't mobilize enough or like she can't mobilize too much because then she just wouldn't be able to do the normal uh, things that a cow has to do, like stand up and walk around. So in studies where we've had a lot of variation in muscle, we still have cows that get to a certain amount of muscle depth, and then they won't mobilize more. If they're drawing on muscle for amino acids, though, especially in early lactation, when maybe amino acids are limiting, then you could see that it would have a negative result on milk production and on milk protein production specifically. And then there's there's a logical link there that it would have consequences on reproduction, but it's not any work that I've specifically done yet. We'll get to another question in just a minute, but a follow up to that is, is mobilization of protein normal? I mean, is it, or do we expect uh, females to mobilize protein after giving birth? Is this a normal biological process? I think it's a normal biological process, but there is considerable amount of variation in cows on how much they do mobilize. I said on average that it's 30 to 35 percent of their muscle, which is an astounding amount, really. It's a substantial amount. It's a substantial amount. And I, you know, I'm saying that from research that we've done at Purdue over several years and several studies. It could be that Purdue cows are just mobilizing more for some reason, but I don't think that that's true. Um, but there are some cows that mobilize closer to 45% as well. And there's some cows that mobilize very little. So there's a lot of variation that exists. Um, likely there's some genetic component that exists as well that is that is controlling the amount of muscle that they have to begin with and therefore the amount that they're able to mobilize. I do feel like it's a natural uh, metabolic adaptation to lactation that occurs. So I don't know that it's something that we're going to completely get rid of, but I think it's something that we can try to understand and support nutritionally to uh, ensure that the cow is not mobilizing too much because it is an energy. Um, it requires energy to mobilize that muscle as well. I guess that's that's a good lead into my last question. So is there nutritional things we can do to the diet, both prepartum and in the fresh period, uh, to at least reduce protein mobilization, not eliminate it, but reduce it. Yeah. And I, I got to be really careful here because I think in some cases, cows that have a lot of muscle, they are mobilizing that and it's resulting in greater energy corrected milk. So they're using it as a resource. So again, I don't know that we want to eliminate mobilization, but we may want to build up muscle reserves at certain stages of lactation that they can draw on so that they never get to a point where they have too little muscle. Um, but you've done some really nice work about feeding higher metabolizable protein in early lactation diets. And I feel like that it shows a lot of promise to um, prevent excessive mobilization at that time point. So they are going to be able to um, not mobilize as much because they have enough amino acids um, that are being supplied through the diet. Introducing Ultrasorb R3.0, Volac's comprehensive and complete solution to reduce the negative impact of naturally occurring toxins on ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 is a species-specific product designed to mitigate the effects of specific mycotoxins in the gastrointestinal tract of ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 also offers lipopolysaccharides binding capabilities. Endotoxins such as LPS can contribute to inflammation in ruminants with energy partitioned to mount an immune response instead of production. Learn more about Ultrasorb R3.0 at volac.com. And uh, last question, is this an area you're going to continue working in? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. It's dependent on funding, but I certainly hope so. We have some nice work that's being finished up now that's following cows throughout their whole lactation. So we can understand not just when they're mobilizing tissue, but when they start accreting tissue. 
And that appears to be a, a really different time frame than adipose. So it appears that cows don't really start appreciably gaining muscle until the very end of lactation, which has some really interesting implications for how we should feed cows at different stages of lactation. Well, great. This has been uh, this is an area I'm interested in. Thank you for participating today. Oh, thank you.